G'day everyone, welcome back to Analytical Strategy and today we will be unpacking episode 14 of Australian Survivor. We have yet another episode where we got to see about 39 twists all in the one episode. And I'm not going to lie, this one was a little bit of a tough one for me to get through. I personally saw how this was all basically going to play out pretty early on in the episode, so I'm going to let you all know my thoughts as they came up as the episode played out, so at the very least hopefully this will give some of you who may get the chance to play Australian Survivor in the future some obvious tells to pick up on when these types of situations arise in future seasons, so you can make the best decision for your game, as your strategy may differ if you know the person isn't actually going to be voted out of the game. So firstly, before anything, I just need to talk about the fact that after Kez was voted out last episode and handed her idol off to Flick, this idol is now actually able to be used in the game unlike what I thought in my previous recap. It turns out this rule change occurred as of Australian Survivor All-Stars, and you're now able to hand advantages in the game off to other people prior to your torch being snuffed. This may be the worst Survivor rule change I have ever heard. I honestly cannot express to you how much I do not like this rule at all. It completely defeats the purpose of flushing an idol. I mean, Simon could have left the game and then just handed his two idols off to someone else on his way out the door. What is the purpose in making this big move against Simon if he can just hand them off? What is the purpose of targeting Kez if she can just hand the idol off to someone else? It almost ruins the concept of a hidden immunity idol. I mean, I didn't think it was that possible to ruin this concept, maybe the best advantage ever introduced to the game. But with this rule in play, it really is just a massive downer to the concept of an idol. With this rule changing, so should the strategy of the game. You should not just be trying to flush idols out these days. You should basically treat every idol like the legacy advantage now. Try to vote people off that have them, but also buddy up to them to try and get their advantages prior to them leaving the game. But if everyone handed off their advantages, it's almost like asking for a Sari type situation to happen, where she got it completely advantaged out of the game. I could honestly rant about this for hours on end, but I really do hope there is enough feedback for production that they strongly consider switching it back to the previous format. And I'm very thankful for Simon for holding onto his idols as he left the game. Anyway, moving on to this episode, it kicks off with George boasting about his great move to save Laura and then get out Kez. And absolutely fair enough, it was a brilliant move. However, Kara then suggests taking out Andrew, and George thinks this is a great idea. My first thought is that it makes being the double agent pretty redundant if you're just going to flip one vote later. It ruins the longevity of being a double agent if that's going to be your next move. However, it is revealed that his relationship with Baden is still extremely strong, which isn't something that has been obvious until now. So shows George is pulling even more strings than he looks to be. So turning on Andrew with Baden's blessing may have made more sense with that information. We also get a look into how Danny's mind is ticking after her ally and Kez went home, and she realises that someone likely snitched rather than Haley just making the correct guess, which is a great read, and it opens up the episode for Danny to try and figure out who that person may be. So we then get to the immunity challenge, where Jonathan announces that there are three necklaces up for grabs, and I'm like, alright. Okay, not a great start, but not too bad. I can deal with that. And then he backs it up with those three will be the only people eligible to cast a vote tonight. And that rapidly changed from not too bad to God, are you absolutely kidding me? My first thought is there is no chance someone will get voted out of the game tonight. They will probably be going to an exile island or something like that, but they can't get three people making a call on behalf of everyone on who will go home. It just won't happen. But again, this is also Australian Survivor, and these twists can be extremely random, so whilst I'm highly confident, I can't be absolutely certain. So Emmett wins the first necklace, Andrew wins the second, and Danny wins the third. So in short, we basically have two brawn likely making the decision on who will get the majority vote tonight. But again, we have to touch upon something that I said earlier in the season, especially on Australian Survivor, is listening to the terminology of Jonathan and the way he words things. He said they are going to be the only people who can cast a vote tonight, not cast a vote for someone to go home. Again, at this stage I am pretty positive we will get that classic Jonathan saying at Tribal, but tonight, it's going to be a little bit different. Likely the three people are going to vote for someone to go to exile. Maybe they'll all have to vote one person each, so three people go to exile to have to compete to get back in the game like we saw in All Stars. Or maybe they are voting for someone to compete for the ultimate reward, like we saw with Ziggy in Season 2. But no matter what, I'd be absolutely shocked if someone actually got voted out of the game. And this was almost a guarantee to be one of the filler episodes of this season. So back at camp, with Danny and Emmett holding really all the power this episode, Danny firstly thinks to put the target on Haley. 
but Emmett prefers Baden, as he wants to control George and Kara without George having that relationship with Baden as he's seen them talk a lot since the merge. This triggers Danny to realise that George was probably the snitch in their plan to get rid of Laura. So it's looking like Danny and Emmett will either vote for Baden or Haley. Then Andrew had a quick chat with the Brains Minority Alliance and they decided on Gerald. But they know it's only one vote and it's likely the Braun members will go after the same person, probably Haley. So his one vote doesn't really matter too much in the end. Now as I predicted in the last recap, Haley is not going to go out of this game without a fight and will look to throw George under the bus to try and save herself this episode. Haley explained this could be a good move for her tonight, as it could save her, but it may backfire long term, as it could leave her with no allies. Now, with Haley being such a big super fan, I'm also surprised she didn't think that it is a little bit weird that three people have all the power to vote someone out. So maybe something else may be at play here. So maybe the best thing for her to do may be nothing? Potentially get the votes? Go to Exile Island, maybe get an advantage at Exile, and then come back into the game? But that also is unbelievably risky if you are wrong in that read. Haley ends up having this chat with Danny and spills all the beans on George and Kara, and lets them know that they have multiple spies feeding the brains information. I think telling Danny to use herself as a shield, as she is the biggest target in the game currently, was a fantastic pitch and the best pitch she could have made after throwing George and Kara's names out there as Danny is already a player in the firing line, so having that shield may be important for her longevity in the game. The concept of Haley turning into the new spy of the game, the new mole and the new double agent also popped up, which would be fantastic television in the future as well. Before Tribal, Emmett seems pretty keen on taking out Baden, and Danny still thinks that Haley is the biggest player, and this may be the only time to strike. But it looks as though Haley has done it again, and it's likely these two will be having a crack at Baden to put a chink in the chain between George and the Brains. So we then get to Tribal Council, we do a little bit of small talk before, boom, let's add another twist onto an already terrible twist, and get the three people who won immunity to go into a fire making challenge. The early favourite for me was Andrew, given he is a survival specialist, so I would have predicted him to win against anyone left in the game. But again, I'm expecting another twist to come, with the winner being the only person to cast a vote, but that vote is not for anyone to actually go home. I mean, surely someone who wins a couple of challenges can't send someone home at this stage of the game, right? Right? We got to the challenge and Andrew had a much more aggressive flint technique than I expected, going absolutely bananas on the flint that he snapped the flint in half. I thought he would have had his technique down absolutely perfectly being an outdoor guru, but no, he seemed to be the worst of the three, with Emmett getting some flame, and Danny coming out of nowhere and lighting massive amounts of husk all at once to erupt the fire, to burn the rope and get the win. So Danny gets the sole vote, so will it be Baden, or will it be Haley that she puts her vote on? And will they stay in the game, or will they go home? So the vote is on Baden, and he doesn't go to Exile Island, but he goes to Redemption Rock. I mean, they have to even create a new name for this big old rock of Redemption Island. It was really a bit of a try-hard episode to me, and I do apologise if I'm being a little bit too negative. But yeah, I really just didn't enjoy this one too much, I am sorry for that. And I hate to say it everyone, but tonight's episode I'm also expecting someone else to also go to Redemption Rock, and then Baden and that person will have to compete to get back in the game, much like Redemption Island. So tomorrow's recap, if that's the case, is probably also going to be a little bit negative and similar to this one. But I'm actually very interested to hear from new Survivor viewers if they enjoy all these twists. Maybe I personally don't like them because I've been involved in the show for 20 years and it is a little bit differently to how I would like the game to be played. I feel like they're put in place for new viewers to try and get them to engage with the show, as all big fans I've spoken to do not like them. But also, it must be hard for new viewers to follow all of this going on at the same time if you haven't seen much of the show before. So for me, it seems like a little bit of a double-edged sword, but please let me know in the comments what you think. But again, I hope this recap gave some insight to future players on how these twists are presented by Jonathan the host, and how you can pick up on these tells in future seasons. So one more episode for the week tonight, and I am hoping for a more standard episode with lots of social strategy and some great character moments, but it'll more likely be Redemption Rock 2.0. I'll be back tomorrow regardless for another recap to round out the week. Thanks again for listening, this is Analytical Strategy signing out, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.